In Washington today, the War Production Board announced that the purchase of metal and rubber for civilian use will be stopped for the duration. It was also stated... <laughs> spot where you can get tires. They might be a bit hot, but they can be had. I can get you a real buy in a used car, and there's nothing to worry about. You get a bill of sale with it. Oh, there it is. It's black and white. But a 30% increase in stolen cars in this district in the last three months. It's your department, Kirby. What have you been doing about it? I've examined every public garage myself. I've ordered my men to bring in anyone who looks suspicious. We've made arrests. Arrests? What good are arrests without evidence? There's an organized ring operating in this town. It's our job to break it up. I've got a squad of the day and night. I'm trying as hard as I know how. Well, we'll have to try harder. Now, we've teamed up every other record in this town. There's no reason why we can't put it into this. Now, either you bear down and get results, or I'll take it over myself. Is that clear? Yes. That's all. Looking for something, Chief? Yes, my pipe. Yes, Chief? Send Clancy. Yes, sir. Sergeant Cancy? You may go in now. Uh, Miss Standing, would it be asking you to violate a secret to tell a fellow... Uh, His mood? Yeah. Not so good. I'm afraid you're in for it. Here's something that'll soften it for you. It's his pipe. He's been looking for it, I know. Oh, thank you. It's the luck of the Irish, so it is. Miss Standing says you'll be wanting this, sir. What's more important, you're overdrawing your pay gun. Well, sir, uh, uh, I've had sickness in the family. Mm -hmm. So why have you been playing the horses again? I don't know what that means. Me? You're not going to take me back, sir. It's regulations. Hold me off, Chief. It'll never happen again. You're right, it won't. Come on, hand it over. I don't know how I'm going to face the missus. She's been sick all winter and... I was sucker enough to think I could catch up on the doctor bills by beating the horses. This bookie you've been doing business with, where does he operate? Oh, across the county line. If I'd ever caught him making book in Lawndale, I'd have pinched him in a minute. I, I would that. How much was you in such a bag? I still owe the doctor $75. Any dollars the bookie? Yes, sir. Betty. Yes, Chief. They got a check for $155 for Sergeant Clancy. Personal loan. Yes, sir. Golly, Chief. Then you're not going to take the badge? You can keep it. See to it, you keep it clean. Oh, I will, that. And thank you, sir. And may the good Lord have mercy on your soul if I ever catch you doing it again. Now, yes. over with you. Yes, sir. <laughs> sure, and that man has a hat the breadth of his shoulders. As if you didn't know. Sure, Clancy, and I think you're fishing. I'll have the chief sign it. Thank you. Instead of firing Clancy, you write him out a check for $155. Yeah, thanks for finding my pipe. See, I'm giving you this afternoon off. Oh? Yeah, I want you to do some shopping for me. Sunday's Mickey's birthday, and there are a lot of things I want you to get. Where did I put that list? Uh, all these toys? What are you trying to do? Do you expect me to get all this in one afternoon? Well, maybe I'd better go with you, huh? What? The chief of police seen out shopping with his secretary? What would the city fathers think? They wouldn't think anything. And all the gossip columns tomorrow will tell the housewives of Lawndale that their handsome chief of police, Richard Bryan, was seen out with his beautiful secretary. Hm. That's me. So what? So, you're child and I'm a designing female. <laughs> no, thanks. I'll go alone. I'll, uh, I'll add tobacco to that list.
Hello, Jason. Ah, oh, there he is. Uh, Mr. Jason, Assistant Police Chief Kirby. Sorry. Jason? Yeah, sit down here, Joe, will you? Mr. Jason wanted to meet somebody in the police department. He's down here to check on that sudden outbreak of car stripping. Well, I don't understand. That's my job in Lawndale. I realize that. But the State Bureau sent me here. We want to approach it from a little different angle. Oh, you're an investigator? Yes. What's the matter? Don't they like our methods up there? Well, it isn't that, but things are more streamlined now. We're too old-fashioned, eh? So they take you young fellows, give you a couple of lessons, and then send you out to show us old-timers how it's done. Now, now, Joe, you mustn't mind that. After all, Jason's here to help us. I came to Mr. Thomas first because he's in the automobile business and he's also head of the city council. Now, I'll expect you to give me all the help you can from headquarters. Don't you think you ought to take this up with Chief Bryan? No. It's just the point. It's his office I'm here to check on. Well, surely you don't suspect him. Well, he's the best law enforcement officer this town's ever had. I don't like doing things behind his back. Now, Kirby, the State Bureau wants our cooperation. As the head of the city council, I'm going to give it to him. Oh, very well. Thank you. Now, I'm to be known only as Mr. Thomas' sales manager. Your job will be to keep a quiet check on Brian. Where he goes, who he meets, usual routine. And then... On your mind, file the excitement over the telephone. There's an investigator in town. He's here checking up on stolen tires and car stripping. You know who he is? Sure, I've met him. His name's Jason. He's working for Thomas, a sales manager. I see where we sunk another Jap submarine. Here's the payoff. He wants me to check up on Brian. Brian? That's perfect. He's starting in the right direction. But what if he stumbles onto something? Where do we get off? We won't let him stumble. Now you play ball with this fellow, Jason. Kirby, how would you like to be the next chief of police? Do everything he wants you to do. Stop reading that stuff. I've tried those wires on everything that's loose. Hey, boss! Maybe if you hook these two wires up to that thing, you can get them rolling. You know, they ought to send a book for these contraptions. It takes electrical engineer to figure the thing out. Go ahead, boss. Hook up that gimmick. I'll fix the thing. It takes all night. If you hook those wires to the track connection, the train will start. Oh, I thought I was bringing something brand new on you. Oh, no. I've been playing with these things for years. Then. <laughs> really very simple, those things. Well, you know enough about it, so you don't need my help anymore. Oh, no, Dad. You boys go ahead and have your fun. When you're finished, there'll be plenty of time for me. Yeah, yeah. Well, say, don't you think it's about uh, time for you to go to bed, young fellow? Okay. <laughs> hey, uh, you wouldn't mind a lot, would you, if uh, if I didn't go up with you tonight? No, not at all. I, uh, uh, uh. Hey, you know, that is a very simple thing. <laughs> no. Good night, Sal. Temple, my eye, what did he do to that thing? It sure was a great party. Thanks for everything. You're welcome, Vicky. I thought it was fun, too. <laughs> you know something? What? I think you're pretty swell. Now, I'll tell you something. I think you're kind of grand yourself. What's going on here? Espionage? <laughs> Deep, dark secrets not intended for the police. Good night, honey. Good night. Good night. Good night, mate. I don't know what we'd have done today without you, Betty. Or any other day, for that matter. The swell of you to go to so much trouble. Nothing's too much trouble when you do it for someone you love. I... Uh, Mickey's just about the sweetest guy in the world. Betty? Yes? You in a hurry? No. I'd like to talk to you. Do you mind? No, of course not. Funny, uh, usually I say what I think, but I don't know how to start the speech. Why don't you start at the beginning? You've been grand to Mickey. 
practically my right arm. Oh, it's been fun, every minute of it. I know, but uh, I've been thinking. Yes? Look, Betty, I'm afraid that you're becoming too attached to Mickey and me. You ought to go out more, meet people, get some fun out of life. Why, there's no doubt there are lots of young fellows that'd be only too glad to take out a girl like you, as if you give them half a chance. You've got my life all figured out for me, haven't you? It isn't that, Betty. I don't want you to be... You're capable and attractive and a real pal. And I want you to know that I appreciate it. But that's as far as it goes. I can't offer you any more than that. That's all I ever expected. I don't want any more. I don't know where you got the idea that I never go out. I have boyfriends. You don't have to worry about me. I know that. I just wanted you to understand my feelings towards you. I understand perfectly. Of course, we're just good friends. I don't know why you think I'd presume otherwise. It's ridiculous. Where's my bag? Thank you. I'll drive you home. No, thanks. I'd rather walk. I need the air. Do you like this thing very much? Not particularly. Neither do I. Good night. Speed. Yes? You through that job? Just about. But when you finish, you better give Al a hand with his car. And tell him the big boss is coming down to pay us a visit. Yeah, something must be cooking. I don't know. I just got a call saying he was on his way. That's him now. Shipping of tires come in? Yeah, but we had a junk about 20 of them. Well, have them check the stuff there before they send it to us. How many cars have you got? 28. Have they been stripped? Yeah. Well, I'll turn it over to Donahue. The boat in tomorrow morning to pick up our stuff. What's the rush, something up? And don't start running a fever. If there's something you ought to know, I'll let you know. Okay, okay, I was just asking. Well, what are you standing around for? I told you to help Al, didn't I? Now get going. Yes, he's here with me now. It'll be $5,000. No check. I want you to get the money at the bank. Keep it at your place for me until I need it. Right. Oh, Dick, you've been out a long time. What's the lead grinder doing here? It's a pickup. A pickup? I don't think Donahue would take that heap of scrap iron. The tires are okay. All right, all right, take it away. Okay, tell Al to strip it. Now, if you're going to take chances, have these fellows double check what they're lifting. It's just as easy to pick up a car with new tires or something like that. In fact, easier, you can get away in it faster. Okay, Lance, okay. It's been years since I've been mixed up with these kind of crumbs. They serve my purpose all right. Well, look, Marlon, I hope you get me straight. I don't fool around with this petty larceny stuff. Do you call five grand for one nice work, petty larceny? Yeah, I don't. I hate to spoil my reputation with this kind of set. I made a deal with you. The job you're doing has nothing to do with this. I just don't want you to get me wrong. Look, when I finish, I want that deal right on the line. It'll be there. You handle your end of the deal, and I'll take care of mine. Auto snatch. Just came over the teletype. Mike, get this in the air. Hot blue sedan on in. More later. Kirby, throw a dragnet around the city. Use every squad car available. Now spread a ring that a gnat couldn't get through. No, Kirby. We let him go through, and then we'll nab him from behind. Once he's inside the city limits, it'll be a cinch to grab him. Now get going. Sir. Calling all cars. Attention all cars. Calling all cars. Attention all cars. Once again, Chief Bryan's well-trained police force proved its efficiency in the capture of Gordon Finch, who was apprehended today. How do you like that, boy? 
Every newspaper in town's plugging for you. Well, one will get you ten that you could be the next mayor of this burg if you wanted to. Yeah, if you were doing the voting. Oh, no. Look how you've cleaned this burg up. And you've only been in office for three years. Three years. Three years ago today. Chief, have the driver of the stolen car out here. Says he won't talk to anyone but you. Well, bring him in. All right. Start talking. Sure, I'll talk. There are too many people in the room. All right, boys, I'll handle this. Wait outside. Put that down. Get over there in the middle of the room. You want to talk to me? What about? Done a great job in this town, Chief. Be ashamed to spoil your record. What do you mean? I'm a three time loser. This rap would send me up for keeps. Well, you should have thought of that before you got picked up. Well, it was a lucky thing for me. I was picked up in Lawndale. You may not feel that way when I get through with you. That ain't the way I heard it. They tell me you're a pretty good guy. Well, let's forget the compliments and get down to business. Okay. I'm a three-time loser, like I told you. The second stretch I did was at Danamora. Tier 327. I was thinking that you got a pretty good break yourself. You might give another guy the same chance. Okay, Finch. I'll make it as easy as I can for you. Now you're talking. All you have to do now is give me a gun, I'll break my way out. Oh, that's out. I've got a job here and I'm going to keep it clean. That's a nice looking kid you got here. It'd be a shame to hang a convict's number over his head. Leave him out of it. I told you I'd make it as easy for you as I can. Oh, that ain't easy enough. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you till tomorrow before I spill it. Hear me? Yes, Chief. We're finished. Take it over, Chief. Give me a break and no one will ever know. You'll never hear from me again. Hello. Oh, yes, Billy. You have an appointment, remember? Appointment? Oh, yes. I, I'll be right there. Thanks. All right, Chief. Stay Get away. in that car. What have you done with my driver? I said get in that car. All right, Pete. Where are you taking me? It's a little party we've arranged for you, Chief. And I think you've got it coming to you. Can't get away with this. <laughs> 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 
the rain. Aren't you a predilation? I didn't think you'd want to admit to that. I might have known you were in on this. I ought to fire you for collusion. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Jason. Hello. Is that Brian's wife? No, no, that's his secretary. He's a widower. Secretary, as usual, they make pretty good small. Oh, well, I'll see what you meet her. Well, how does it feel to be taken for a ride? Well, fine when it ends up like this. I'm sure disappointed in you, Fred. Yeah, how's that? Well, I think the DA of being on a plot to kidnap the chief. <laughs> Congratulations, Dick. I want you to meet Mr. Jason, my new salesman. Glad to meet you. Congratulations. Thanks. Oh, and may I present uh, this is Mr. Jason, Miss Standing, the chief's right-hand man. How do you do? How do you do? Well, come on, Dick. We're ready for the slaughter. Uh, no speeches, please. Quite a homely party. Yeah, I feel like an outsider. Well, you sit right here with us. We'll make him feel at home, will we, Mickey? Sure, Mickey. Members of the Police Welfare Association and guests. Tonight... Mark's Chief Brian's third anniversary as the head of Lawndale's Police Department. <laughs> and it also gives us an opportunity to wish Godspeed to these two young members of the department who have joined Uncle Sam's forces. <laughs> you know, some years ago, Dick Bryan entered this community an unknown young man. And then one day, a day we'll all remember, fire broke out in one of our public schools. His heroic conduct on that day marked Dick Bryan's introduction into public life. And since that time, we've recognized in him a natural-born leader of men. And I'm sure that's an opinion held by everybody. <laughs> and now I want to introduce the popular secretary of this association, Sergeant Clancy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I, I'm not much of a public speaker. I, I just want to say that every man on the force loves the chief, and tonight we want to express our sentiments in a way that he won't forget. Chief Bryan. <laughs> on behalf of the city council and the boys on the force, I present you with this diamond-studded gold badge. <laughs> Friends and guests, fellow members of the Police Welfare Association, I can't tell you how grateful I am for this testimonial. It makes me very happy to have been able to render a small service to this community, but in doing so, I've had to neglect another job, that of being a father to my son. My duties have been such that, well, I haven't had the time to spend with him that I would like to have had. And that's a condition, naturally, that I'd like to change. I want to take this opportunity to thank you and all the people of Lawndale for the many nice things you've done for me. But I'm sorry to announce that I am giving up public life. Oh. Hey. I don't understand. I don't mean it. Need you here. You as chairman of the city council, I refuse to accept his resignation. <laughs> we won't have it! No. No. Now, before there's any other discussion, I move that we hit the lines at that buffet table. Come on. <laughs> if you'll excuse me, I'll see about some food. Chief anymore? Well, we'll talk about that later, sir. Do me a favor. Will you take me home? I've got something very important to attend to. But this is your party. I can't stay. I'm not going to. Oh, fine. Where are you going, Chief? This is Foreman. I'm sorry. I got out with this before the stampede. Oh, no, thanks. I have to take Mickey home. Someone driving you? Well, Sergeant Clancy brought us, but My I'm... car's outside. Oh, I hate to take you away from this party. Not at all. This party's over as far as I'm concerned. Oh, thanks. See why your boss is a success. He's got something to work for. He certainly has. That's only half of it. And there is another half? Mm hmm. His work? No. No time for romance. No, he's in love with his job. It's a little puzzling. If he's so in love with his job, why did he try to resign tonight? From all I gather, it was rather sudden. I don't know. I was a little surprised myself. I suppose it must have been the reason he gave. 
He's very attached to Mickey. He often says how his work keeps him from being with her. You don't think much of him, do you? You could be a little prejudiced. A lot of officials have two sides. A noble side they show to the public and another side that's not so public. Mm -hmm. About five bosses he's the same on both sides. Except more so. Pretty loyal to him, aren't you? If you knew him like I do, you'd understand why. We're almost there. Be glad to wait for you and drive you home. Yeah, thanks. Have to get Mickey to bed. I'll take a cab. I'll give you a ring some of the time. Sure. Oh, the lesson, boss. If this guy Finn spills why, you're gonna be a washed up pigeon in this town. They're gonna forget all the good things you've done. Why don't you let him scram and forget all about it? That wouldn't solve anything. He'd still be free to pop up again. Oh, well, boss. If that's all you're worried about, I can fix that. You mean what I think you mean? Yeah. Oh, but boss, this is different. You're on a spot. That's out, Benny. Strictly out. For me or anyone else. Always remember that. <laughs> but what are we going to do? Yeah, what about the kid? I know, I know. Uh, i got to work it out my own way. Now you take the car and go on home. Good night, Benny. Oh, but boss. You heard me now. Good night, Benny. Okay. Attention precincts, calling all cars, general order 204, 204, pick up Gordon Fitz. <laughs> I can't let you in. The chief won't see reporters today. He won't, huh? Well, maybe no. you can tell us something. How did Finch get the gun? Was it an inside job? I don't know a thing about it. Ah, oh, go ahead. Come, Come on, be a good sport. Give us a oh, break. All right, I'll ask him, but I don't promise anything. Have a girl. Now, oh, oh, please, gentlemen. Those news hounds are still clamoring out there. Don't you think you ought to see them? Tell them later. Seth and maybe. Something's worrying you. Finch killed a guard and escaped him. So nothing, huh? No. No, it's much more than that. You were worried before that happened. You've been up all night. Oh, I know it's none of my business, but I hate to see you tormented this way. Betty, there's something that, uh, something I should have told you. Years ago, long before I came to Lawndale, I worked in a bank, and I foolishly took some money that, well, that didn't belong to me. And I paid for my mistake with three years in prison. Well, now I understand. That's why you wanted me to go out and meet other people. Other men. Well... Do you think that would have made any difference? Well, I realize now that it doesn't. As far as you're concerned. Then you're thinking about Mickey? That's right. I never want him to find out. But how can he? It's all been so long in the past. Yeah, but pasts yeah. like that don't stay buried. Not when a fellow's in public life. That guy Finch knew about it and threatened to talk. Next month there'll be someone else. That's why I decided to go back to private life. Maybe you're right. Mickey does make a difference. Well, it means starting all over again. But... Would you be willing to risk that with Mickey and me? Would I? How often does a girl get a chance to tie up with two swell guys? Sabotage. Chief Brian's office. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, I'll tell him. It's Mr. Thomas. He says there's a meeting at the council and he wants you to come right over. That's fine. I'll make him accept my resignation while I'm there. And tell those news hounds to stand by for a scoop. Hello, oh, Benny. You know where your friends. All we want to know is where the chief went after he left the testimonial dinner. I don't know nothing. All I do is work for the chief and mind my own business. Oh, we know all that. We're just trying to help you, that's all. I ain't saying nothing. If there's anything to be said, he's going to say it. Benny, we know you were in the penitentiary. So what? 
This could be pretty serious for you. Okay, okay, but I ain't saying nothing. Good morning, gentlemen. Oh, uh, good morning, Dick. Uh, come on in. I'm sorry about this. It's a little embarrassing. <laughs> What's on your mind? Well, sit down. Uh, this Finch affair's got the whole town in uproar, and the, the papers are yelling for an explanation, and... Well, I'd like an explanation myself. Maybe this will refresh his memory. I guess there's nothing I can say. I tried to resign last night. And that was last night. Since then, a guard was killed and Finch escaped. We have every reason to suspect you of complicity. Why, that's ridiculous. You know me better than that. I'm afraid the evidence is conclusive. All right, Kirby. We don't like to use this method, Dick, but you leave us no alternative. Go ahead, play the rest of it. That's all there was. Dick, this is the hardest thing I've ever had to say in my life. But I... I, I I'll make it easy for you. I'm to be held on circumstantial evidence. All right. I'll go. Oh, no question of beauty with us entirely. It's a lie! It's a dirty, rotten frame! You can't do that to us! Why... I'll handle this, Penny. Well, it certainly didn't take you long to clean up this case. I've just started. What? You forget that my assignment here was to locate a gang that's been operating. Yes, but wasn't Brian the brains of the outfit? Yes, he's mixed up in it somewhere, but we've still got a lot of work to do. I hope I can continue to count on you for help. Oh, of course you can. Certainly you can. You know, I'm only too glad to cooperate. Come in. Oh, excuse me. I didn't know you were busy. Not at all. What can I do for you? That, uh... Convertible coupe parked at the curb outside. One of your men told me to see you about it. Well, it's for sale. Might be interested. How about a demonstration? Oh, certainly. Excuse me, will you? Yeah, sure. After you. Standing. Hello. I came to see Mr. Thomas, but I'm afraid I just missed him. Yes, he went out to give a demonstration. Well, it looked like Lance Merlin with him. Lance Merlin? Yeah, he used to be Lawndale's number one racketeer. Well, I guess even racketeers buy cars. Uh, you know, it strikes me as odd. I came to see Mr. Thomas about Chief Bryan, and Lance Merlin happens to be one of the Chief's bitterest enemies. Well, I guess Bryan's made a lot of enemies. He's made a lot of friends, too. And one of them is Mr. Thomas. Well, what good could he be? For instance, they found the stolen car that Finch got away in. It's not the headquarters now, and no one's doing anything about it. Well, maybe I could help. You? Yes. My work, you pick up a lot of information about the tricks and gimmicks that crooks use to revamp stolen cars. Some even the police don't know. Would you want to see it? Let's go. We picked it up about 12 miles from the border. I guess he got across the line. Mm-hmm. Funny thing about this bus, 
It fits the description of a car stolen about six weeks ago, except that the serial numbers don't match. But well, they could have been ground out, you know. What about an x-ray? That would show up the original number. An x-ray? Say, you'd make a good cop. I do pretty well as an automobile salesman. I'll stick to that. Fifteen plate Vic battery. Wonder how many agencies in Lawndale handle the Vic battery. Well, I don't know, but I can find out for you in a jiffy. Thanks. Is there a river near here? Mm-hmm. There's one on the outskirts of Lawndale. Mm -hmm. Do you know of any river that's near the border? What is all this talk about rivers and mud? And why are you collecting it? We may have stumbled onto something. Oh. George H. Trevor, Jones and Burton, and J.C. Thomas all handle big batteries. Well, thanks, Sergeant. We won't bother you any further. Gee, thanks, Clancy. You'll be a peach. Take nothing of it. Say, he's a very bright young fella. If he's trying to help the chief, tell him to drop in on me anytime. Okay, thanks. Oh, say, Nate, where could I find a record of the Vic batteries received here? Top drawer of the file in the office. Fine. It'll be marked bills paid. Oh, well, thanks. These specimens of mud are identical. They both come from the river front. You sure of that? Not the slightest doubt. There's no silt like this within miles of the border. Mm -hmm. Right now he's at the chemist. He thinks he's found some important evidence. He didn't say what, but... I don't get it. Why should an automobile salesman suddenly become interested in this case? I don't know. He's certainly trying to be helpful. Well, that part's all right. But I still don't like the idea of your going with him and ransacking Thomas's office at this hour of the night. Don't you know that's unlawful? Was it lawful to put you in here on trumped up evidence? I'm only interested in getting you out. We'll worry about the law when you're free. You're a grand girl, Betty. There's just one thing I'm wondering about. This fellow Jason sounds like a pretty intelligent chap. I wonder if it's really me that he's interested in. That's unimportant. The important thing is that I'm interested in you. I'll report to you in the morning. Good night. Right. Wait a minute. It's nice of you to do this for someone you don't even know. What if I had another reason? Still wouldn't change my opinion of you. I wish I could be sure of that. He's gone. Okay. I'll be right back. I don't see why this couldn't have waited until morning. Because he wants to get started tonight, that's why.
Thomas and Vernon. Yes, I know. Keep after them, but not too close. All right. Good night. Stay here and keep your eyes on that clock. If I'm not back in five minutes, phone the DA's office and tell him to send a squad out here. Now remember, the DA, not Kirby. Not Kirby? Please, darling, we'll play quiz games later. Do it my way, huh? Please be careful. Are you really worried about me? Well, of course I am. When this thing is over, you and I are going to celebrate. Uh, this means more to me than just an exciting adventure. It's our only chance to get the chief out of this mess. He's still top man with you, huh? Mm-hmm. Funny. If I clear the chief and my chances with you will be pretty slim. But I'm not the kind of a guy that gives up easily. Come on now. Remember, five minutes. Oh, uh, by the way, there's a little matter of five thousand dollars. You're wasting your time, it's all there. The idea unlocking the window, boss. Expecting a visitor and he hasn't got a key, and I want to be sure he gets in. Go with it. Speed. Pass the lights. Okay, boss. There we are. Get him up there. Hello, Mr. Jason. I don't think we've met formally. Merlin's the name, Lance Merlin. I'm in the automobile business. Yeah. So I see. Can you bring his car in? Let me have a gun. How about a lift, sister? Well, I... We're just going in there. Come on, sister. All right, Kelsey. How do you do, Miss Standing? I'm surprised at you. Never thought you'd wind up double-crossing your boss. I don't understand. This man's a special investigator. He came to Lawndale to frame Brian. That's right. He's the one who got Kirby to make the record to Tripton. I'm afraid he's right, Betty. That's a great line you handed me. He wasn't satisfied with that. He had to come snooping around here, and now he's dragged you into it. I know. I only have myself to blame. All this cab doesn't interest me. I'm on my Don't way. Don't be a sap. You be picked up before you get out of the city. There's a boatload of tires going out tomorrow. We'll drop you off close to the border. Okay, this sounds pretty good. Miss Jason, Mr. Standing will go along with you for the ride. Hey, you know, Phil, what a right guy the boss is. Why, he helps every car that gets out of stir. Now he's in a jam, and the only way I can help him out is to find out where Finch is. 
Wrong number, Ben. I don't know a thing about Finch's mob or his hideout. All right. Two across the bar. Hey, Joe. The boss is there. Little man, I'm going to place. I don't care how I have okay, to Okay, Frank. I'll oh, beat it. Yeah, Gelsey. Gelsey? I'm Gelsey. He drives for Lance Merlin. I got you. Getting away early in the morning, eight o'clock. Okay, boys. Come on, Bob. Get rolling. What's the idea? Don't worry, I'll give you the idea. Drive on. We'll try again. Where's Finch? I don't know. Where's he hiding now? I told you. I don't know. Don't give me that. Well, look, kid. You're blushing. That's a sure sign you're lying to me. Now, listen. How are you going to speak up and tell me? Or am I going to have to keep slapping you around? I don't know what they mean, see? Okay. My time's your time. I can wait. Oh. You bite your fingernails too, huh? You know? I knew a Jap once. Had a cure for that. Manicure! <laughs> yeah. But yours, they're much too short. We're gonna have to lengthen them. You're gonna live a long time in the next few minutes. Excuse me. It's a long time till morning. The shoulder isn't working. You might as well relax. No, thank you. Look, Betty. I know how you feel about me, but what I did to Brian was part of my job. You can understand that. I understand perfectly. And cultivating me was probably part of your job, too, no doubt. Yes. Yes, I admit it was at first. And I began to realize how, how much you meant to me. If you don't mind, I'm not interested. But I do mind. Very much. I don't know what you two are gabbing about, but if you're figuring on a getaway, you better forget it. Norman, oh, you're priceless. I'd like to have you stuffed. So I finally found him. Got him up at the house. First off, he won't talk. Then I get an idea. I give him a Jap manicure. He's got one hangnail sore and all the rest. So when I go to work on that, why he swings out and spills the works. Now, boss, all you gotta do is give me the word and we'll pick Finch up. No, Benny. I don't want Finch picked up. Well, what do you mean? No. I gotta get out of here. You mean that you and... Oh, bossy. It's gonna be kind of tough to spring you out of here. But I got an idea, you know, nothing like that. Now, there's only one way. You go to the DA's and tell him that I'm ready to make a clean breast of everything. Oh, no, boss, you can't do that. Well, you heard what I said. Tell him that I'll sign a confession. But go to the DA's, not headquarters. No, I won't do it. You must be out of your mind. 
Are you still taking orders from me? Oh, yes, I'll and you'll be at the DA's as soon as it opens. All right, if that's the way you feel about it. Benny. Uh, how's Mickey? Oh, the kid, he's okay. Betty's taking care of him. She'll get him off to school. You got nothing to worry about there. Frightful mess. I'll have no rowdyism in this school, you understand? Ah, he hit me first. Is that right, Michael? Yes, sir. Why did you hit him? Answer me. Because I called his father a jailbird. And he is. He is. No, here, yeah, boys. Please, please. Uh, yeah. School is no place to bring up personal matters of that kind. Please. I won't have it. Do you understand? Both of you boys go home and get cleaned up. Your clothes are a frightful mess. Acting Chief Kirby speaking. The DA wants Brian brought over to his office. Detail a couple of men to bring him over right away. Well, uh, there isn't a man in the place right now, sir. But seeing it's so pressing, I'll bring him over myself. Yes, sir. Kelly! I always maintain, once a criminal, always a criminal. Hey! Sit tight, Clancy. Don't look back, Kelly. Turn right at the next corner. You better do as he tells you, lad. He's got my gun. believe he got away. Too bad. Yeah. Slippery guy, the chief. Hey, Dad! Dad! Hey, Daddy! Well, what, what's happened? There was a man. I came home and there was a man all tied up. And his wish were bleeding. Uh -huh. and, and he asked for some water and I loosened one hand so he could drink. Uh -huh. Then he grabbed my arm and twisted and made me untie him. All right, all right. What are you doing home from school? Dad, you're... You're not a jailbird, are you? No, kid, no, of course he ain't. Well, when a man's been arrested, some people might call him that. But you're no crook. No, Ben. Your dad's no crook. Well, I didn't think so, and I'll smash anybody who says you are. Well, we, uh... We don't get any place smashing people. Now, you run over to Betty's house. I'm going to be pretty busy for a while. All right, Dad. Bye. Bye. Come on, come on, let's have it. I held out as long as I could. Boss, I helped me. The guy was torturing me. Take a look at that hand. My sock full of mice you got here. Listen, you crawling yellow belly outside. Everybody, no time for beefing. I'm getting out of here, but fast. We're all getting out of here. Go and get the truck. <laughs> Be right inside, Finch. It'll keep you out of sight. Get in the back, Finch. What about them? Get the cuffs off of them and get them in the truck. Somebody behind that car. Let him have it. Got a gun? 
No, I don't. Take this one. I knew I should have left last night. Stay in here. They've hit Richard, I tell you. They've hit him. Stay here, I say. Now, get down. Don't worry, no more, boss. I got them. I got them all. Jason, we've got to get these people to the hospital. And thank you, gentlemen, for your confidence in officially appointing me the chief. Excuse me for intruding, gentlemen. Not at all, Jason. Come in. I thought you might like to know that we've broken the back of that mob of car strippers. Well, congratulations. That's fine. Have you got Brian? He's in the hospital with a bullet in his chest. Oh, well, that's too bad, but a little souvenir he got in the line of duty. Line of duty? In fact, it's Brian you have to thank for ridding Lawndale of this mob. Oh, before I forget, the chief asked me to return this to you and apologize because one of the diamonds is missing. You see, that's where Merlin's bullet struck. Well, he had it coming to him if he helped Finch escape. You're wrong. He had nothing to do with that. Well, then who did? Perhaps your new chief, Mr. Kirby. Or Mr. Thomas can tell you. Well, what would I know about it? Kirby took his orders from you. What's that? The $5,000 you gave to Merlin. It was found on Finch. Why, John, how do you explain this? Well, there, there must be some mistake. Yeah. And you made it. Is this the man? Yeah, he slipped the gun into my cell and... Cool off, Cookie. You ain't going no place. Hello, Betty. Hello. Hi, young fella. How is he? Much better. He's oh. been asking for both of you. Benny, can I go in to see Dad now? Why, uh, sure, kid. I'll take it kind of quiet like, will you? Sure. I'll see you when I come out. Maybe not. Matter of fact, I've got to get going. I'm leaving town. This is rather sudden, isn't it? Yes. Another job to do. Oh, well, I suppose this is goodbye. You've been swell. You've been pretty swell yourself. And there's a couple of grand guys waiting for you in there. Good luck. Thanks. Good luck. I'd have slugged you for that. You want a what? Yeah, now that you got the boss and the kid practically married off, what chance have I got of taking care of them? Yeah, it looks like we're both out in the cold, Benny. How about taking care of me? No, I don't know. See if I can take care of all three of them first. Then maybe I'll consider it. 